Welcome to Kimmer's Gaming. Today I'm going to talk about one of the games which probably was inspired by Pac-Man. The game we will be talking about is Dig Dug. Gamers who own the Atari 2600 do know one thing, whenever a port is done from the arcade version to the system its graphics are never as good as the original, but the gameplay can be just as smashing. Dig Dug from Namco, published in 1982 looked awful on the Atari 2600. Rather than the well-rendered, solid dirt of the arcade version, the 2600 version has horizontal brown lines representing the dirt. It looks pretty bad. Although characters like Puka and Figer, the bad guys, looked like chunky vomit, but they are recognizable at least. Figer's flame is one color, a complete deviation from the well-animated flame of the arcade but this was the early 80s. What can we expect? There is some screen flicker as well, which can be aggravating. The rocks are just squares and the bonus vegetables flicker continuously. Still, the game's graphics suffice for a bit of fun. The Atari version of Dig Dug might not be a copy of the arcade version but they get the job done. Dig Dug's audio is very close to the arcade. Dig Dug's jet-powered shovel sound is well preserved and there are also sound effects when monsters are about to attack. Taking into account the low quality sounds in other Atari 2600 games, this was a welcome change of pace. Gameplay is good. Controls are fine as well. There is nothing that wrecks a good game like sloppy controls. And with Atari 2600 this is certainly not an issue. The arcade controls are identical to the Atari 2600 joystick with its single fire button. This button is used as a pump button for this game. Sure, Dig Dug moves slower than what I'd like, but at least it is not much of challenge to point your character in the right direction and pump enemies full of air in order to blow them up, literally. So, what is the story of this game? Strap on your mining helmet because you are an underground miner with jet-powered shovel called Dig Dug. Dig Dug encounters enemies in the form of odd-looking tomatoes and fire-breathing dragons. Both are deadly to touch. Dig Dug creates a maze around the subterranean layers as he moves around the screen. Upon encountering the enemies, Dig Dug uses his air hose as a weapon and pumps the enemies up until they explode. Gamers control this via fire button in their joystick. One has to be careful not to let Dig Dug dawdle around too much since the longer it takes to pump the enemies up, the more likely they are to transform into ghost-like forms and converge on Dig Dug. This makes the game a little more intriguing. Dig Dug can also dislodge boulders that, if properly timed, will fall on top of any enemies in their path. What is an arcade game without points? Points are scored for each shovel of dirt dug. Just like in real life, the deeper Dig Dug digs, the greater the number of points he can score. Points are also scored for blowing up enemies or dropping rocks on them as well. Also, whenever at least two boulders are dislodged, a fruit or a vegetable will appear in the center of the map. These can be worth quite a number of points if Dig Dug manages to get one before it disappears. What makes the game more tricky is that you need to use some strategy to be safe. If Puka and Frygars turn into ghosts, they can travel through solid dirt and chase Dig Dug. So, eliminating the enemies early to keep them from ganging up from our hero is important. On top of that, big points are scored for dropping boulders on enemies. Hence, it is worth the effort to lure them into position to be destroyed. Also, the last enemy of the level will try to escape after everyone is dead, so chasing him and sticking an air hose up its butt is a good tactic. If you're really good at Dig Dug on the 2600, you'll see the score ticking up to a maximum of 999,990 points. On the arcade version, you can get up to the millions. On the higher levels, you'll need to stay the center of the screen to snag the prized veggies. They worth more in points than pumping up and blowing the enemies. As you progress to higher levels, you need to be careful to keep the number of enemies under control. When being chased, 
It is a good strategy to move in tunnels rather than digging into soil, since moving in tunnels is a lot faster. When we look at the functionality of the difficulty switch on the 2604 Dig Dug, we don't have to look far, because it doesn't do anything. This is a letdown, because they could have inserted some options to even the playing field for gamers with different playing skills. Coming on to Dig Dug's game variations we see that there are only two, namely Easy and Normal Mode. Normal Mode has changing tunnels, enemies and rocks with each level. Easy Mode displays a severed teddy bear head as an indicator. In this mode nothing changes and there are only two enemies that never turn into ghosts. A gamer has five lives when they start. When the enemies take all the five lives, the player has the option to start the next game in the same level they have finished, or, by pressing the fire button for about 10 seconds a gamer could go back to the title screen. Players can have 8 lives at any point. First bonus life comes at 20,000 points, and thereafter at each multiple of 50,000 points. So, what is my final judgment on this game? Well, Atari Dig Dug is an awful looking game but once gamers get into its gameplay, its visual faults are replaced by pure 80s style fun. Later version on various platforms did improve on the ugly graphics, however on the Atari 2600, it is still fun to play. Dig Dug Arcade was developed and published by Namco in Japan in 1982 for Namco, and it used Galaga hardware. It was later published outside Japan by Atari. Also, some bootleg versions of Dig Dug were made under the name of Zigzag. That's all for now. Have a nice day. If this was how it could be, the world would all soon see, the potential inside, the wave we could ride, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, I would turn into we, with a face-to-face -face meet, our thoughts were complete, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, our machines would be the key, the problems they'd solve helping plans to evolve, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, we'd make one plus one equal three. We'd be hiring more, and spirits would soar, if this was how it could be. And now this is how it can be. A place where ideas flow free, we all work together, and business runs better. When your apps all begin with a G.